Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the Always Premier podcast. I'm your host, Adela Redondo, and we're back for another Go to Fly Wednesday. We have a very special guest this month. We've had her already last month in April, as she already told us all about her Go to Fly story. We have Miss Shayla Carr. Hi, Shayla. Hi. So grateful. <laughs> She's like, okay, you guys shy for two seconds. You're like, hi. I can see your face. It's adorable. Love it. Shy for some time. <laughs> yeah, time. You're like, oh, wait a second. We were just talking about the opposite and how we just hit play and then we go. Like, oh, wait a second. It happens. It happens to me too. I was like, oh, wait, hold on. Yeah, hold on. Okay. <laughs> okay let's, let's do that again. <laughs> no, seriously. See, this is. What you see is what you got over here at the Always Believer, as you already know, Team Flyer. Um, we've, if you want to hear all about her and her story and her very, very, <sighs> I loved your Go to Fly episode because you literally just like opened up so much to us and you talked so much about not only what you do as a spiritual coach and leader and terror and all these sorts of things that we're definitely going to remind our audience at the end of the episode, a little bit more what you do, of course, and what we can mind you. Um, but the whole storyline, like you actually told really intense, really cool, very detailed stories. And um, for all of you who are just tuning in and you haven't heard that episode, please go listen to all the episodes she's in because we have her all month long. She's we have her in two, twice this month of May, which I'm really, 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 really grateful for. I really am. And um, go follow her TikTok. Go follow her everywhere. Like definitely like and buying all that stuff. And we'll talk a little bit more about what you do a little bit after. But um, for this month of May, we're doing deep dives on different subjects, <laughs> basically. Um, subjects um, that you and me talk about a whole bunch, not only independently in our lives, but also with ourselves because we're friends. Also to our public, to our community, to just everything who we are as like people. So I was like, let's make a podcast episode about it. Well, let's make two actually in this month. And um, let's just take it out for a whirl for a little bit longer than a three minute video on TikTok. <laughs> Basically, right? Yeah, let's dive deep. <laughs> exactly. Get into it. So the first episode um, of, of this month with you it's actually one of your quotes, but like, I just realized it probably, like, I'm going to say it and it's kind of like, it's weird out of context, I guess. Um, well, let me say the quote first and then we'll take it from there because why not? The quote that you were, so we were talking about that we were both talking about uh, a few weeks ago was, we're all going through it. Your body transforms it into something different. And for those who are wondering, what are we all going through? Well, we're going through a lot right now <laughs> aren't we Shayla can you tell us a little bit more what we're all going through as a whole as a community I feel like you can explain yourself a little bit better than me right now yeah absolutely I would love to um we all are going through it and for more context the day that I um had messaged you that and had said that I was I was like I shared before we jumped on the podcast literally at rock bottom felt like I was back at rock bottom and almost like I had regressed on my path and it was really confusing because of how much healing I've done so I sat with that and I was like okay well what is really going on and what we're seeing happening right now is very high vibrational energy coming onto the planet. So what this is doing is giving us the option, the choice, the two paths that are ultimately opening up to stay in this lower vibrational reality, which feels really chaotic. It's not fun. We're just like spinning our wheels, kicking the dirt um, or to ultimately ascend. And the ascension process is one of elevating our vibrational frequency. And in order to do that, which the earth has requested to ascend everything in the natural world, we're all all of us humans, we're all on this path of elevating in order to do that, to follow the natural ebb and flow of nature cycles, we have to acknowledge the places where we're still holding on to darkness, or we're still holding on to that lower vibrational energy. And most of us are doing this unconsciously. Like I believe human beings to be inherently good and none of us really want to experience a bad reality. Um, we may think that at times, maybe because we, there's there's another belief that we're not worthy to actually receive the reality that we want to experience but ultimately at the end of the day human beings like homeostasis we like things to be comfortable we want to feel good we want to be happy um so ultimately it's like we're we're seeing this it's almost like this like a, a quantum jump that's happening exactly um, yeah that, that's exactly what's happening we're quantum shifting as a collective 
as a collective um, for the first time. I don't know how long, but I think for the first time in a really long time that I felt it this way, this intensely. And I remember even going back to the portal to 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 like have the whole manifestation day and and all this like that's one of the days I'm forever gonna have in my heart for like all the rich wonderful things that I did, including the beach because I'm very into the ocean. So like I went to the sea that day and all the sorts of things that else I did. And through that moment, even probably beforehand, it's definitely a shift started happening already beforehand. It's not one specific date in particular, but it was like you could just feel the shift and it's interesting because once you're surrounded once you surround yourself by it not only with yourself unconsciously or not you're starting to attract people throughout whatever social media that you follow whatever friend that you have whatever coworker, family member in general you start seeing certain kind of shifts and moves of seeing people like quantum jumping or leaping or like being more conscientious or staying up for our rights a lot more speaking our truth a lot more you start seeing that. So yeah, that's exactly what you said, quantum leaping. Yes, absolutely. And I think as well, like, as more and more of us are finding each other, finding people that are on a similar journey, it's also accelerating the triggers. Because now there's lots of different beings that are reflecting back to us our divinity. So if there's something that we have yet to release that's in conflict with this divine inner light, that's going to come up to the surface and we're going to start to feel uncomfortable. And I think that that that's why, I mean, I know my own life, I've definitely felt like a pullback, like I'll jump into a community and be like, oh my gosh, like the reflection, it's too much. I need to, I need to retreat. It's, it's safer there. Um, yeah, but we're in a process right now where this shift in consciousness is happening within everybody. Again, the collective, so many people, and it's happening really fast that there's really nowhere that we can go to hide anymore. Like the light is- Exactly. It's not like, yeah. It's not only happening extremely fast. And it was weird because like, remember the last, I remember kind of the last six months of last year when I was even going through a lot of personal shifts with like moving and like not only like moving within myself, but literally physically moving from one condo to the other and changing my whole lifestyle again and doing all that work all the cards, all the signs were like, whenever it's happening, it's going to happen fast. It's going to happen. It's going to happen fast, but it's going to happen fast, but it's going to happen fast. And that's one thing after the other. And then now that you're going actually through, you're like, holy mother, like it's only, it's only been three months. And like, it's already been such much of like a huge, like outturn of change. Once again, only within myself, but I can see it. I can actually see that change. But like, like you said, like as a whole, as a community, because we are talking about like, people really standing up for themselves and people really working and going through the shadow work and people being more vulnerable, which is what, once again, that's where you and me come and play with all this, because if anybody's vulnerable, it's us. And if anybody wants to join us, welcome to the team, because that's the, the essence of us. I mean, I, this month, I mean, like, I, I, if you guys keep following my podcast, I've definitely been very straightforward of what's going on with my health and what's going on with my life. And a very straightforward way, not only through like the YouTube video and the podcast, and you see my face and you see like me crying or me just like, you know, not always picture perfect. That's what I'm trying to say. Like literally me, raw, real, rare. Um, but also the TikToks that I just randomly pick up and I'm like, oh, this is my life today. And this is what I'm going through. So I think there's more and more content in the sense of that's a good thing because we're being more and more vulnerable because like you said, there's nowhere else to hide. <laughs> it's like it's now or it's now it's now or it's now <laughs> exactly take it or leave it and if you leave it then i'll see you in another lifetime maybe hopefully not and then let me continue my path because <laughs> i am jumping i am leaping um oh my goodness gracious i do want to start talking a little bit more about the whole body and the whole like the way that we transmute that through our body without going into my whole back issue right now, which is not super major, but without going that, I just, so I'm here listening to you and I muted my mic a couple of times because I would tickle in my throat. I've been having this tickle in my throat probably for about two months. And I know it's not allergies. I know it's not, you know what I mean? <laughs> and it's related. It's one of those, it's the throat chakra. Mm -hmm. so every single time I'm presented a situation that whether I'm a doctor, I'm talking to a certain person, even if it's something so super, magical about this my throat gets like it's getting ready it's like a mic getting ready it's like I don't know how to explain it and I mentioned it a lot of my TikToks because obviously that's the easiest way to have faster content out there on a daily basis 
rather than the weekly podcast episode, for example, or even Instagram. Um, so I do talk about it a lot. And I mute my mic and I was listening to it. I'm like, I have my water with me and I'm like this. I want to talk about this. Not even my back just yet. Like what I'm going through there and that kind of part. But it's like, isn't it insane how your body gives you that sign? Because I kid you not, or I cough a lot. I'm like, I'm like, I know I'm fine. I know it's not like I'm sick or anything. It's like something in my throat, something because I can't hide anymore. The truth needs to come out more and more. Right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Like the energy energy doesn't lie and the more in tune we become with our energy body the more I think it manifests itself in our physical body or like the louder it becomes um like you said you're not sick but like this thing this thing this thing how do I there's no rational explanation for it so we have to look to the energy body like what's happening in our emotions what's happening in our mind what are the things that we're still holding on to that um you know our higher self may be asking us to release but um it's I love how our journeys mirror each other um, like the difficulties we've been having emotionally the past like two, three weeks. Um, and then also with your throat chakra, I've been experiencing throat chakra issues. Um, I feel like I finally have my voice back uh, for two weeks, I think this past month um, or the month of April. I was like, where is my voice going? Where, where did it go? It like lowered. I couldn't reach high notes. Like I, I'm very expressive when I speak. Me and too. I would have- yeah. And I was like, what is this? And it felt like I was getting sick, but I knew I wasn't getting sick. And yeah. Yeah. So- it's interesting. Exactly. I still have it for some reason. And which I, I technically understand. I have to release a lot more. We were talking about this pre-podcast episode, because of course we always talk before we start recording. And it was like, what we we're saying, it's that like that holding on to the guilt or shame or anger even. And I feel like you and me are a mixture of all of that. But once again, there's not only we're talking we're not only talking about Ariadna or Shayla, we're talking about a collective, we're talking about a community, whether you want to call it in my case Team Flyer, whether you just want to call it the collective in general. I feel like we're we're all being called out in certain kind of ways. And our throat chakra is mine's like root and my throat and my root chakra, but we'll get to the root in a second. But let's like focusing on that voice. Mm -hmm. so I was like I was losing my voice and because I was sick I was like what is happening like how what what am I what am I hanging on to still why am I still this freaking angry (laughs) and even though we do a lot of release sessions and things like that I'm like how do we get it out (laughs) like let's find ways yeah and that's that's where it gets fun is when we start to experiment with like ways that we feel called to move energy and it really comes down to intention and finding the ability to just accept what's coming up um so I'll speak from my experience I the eclipse energy was very very challenging for me I have a lot of fixed energy in my charts and this eclipse specifically was triggering the fixed signs um so I was taken back to some things that I had done in my past that I wasn't proud of not only am I not proud of them but I wasn't honest with the individual I was interacting with or myself. And I had completely bypassed these experiences. Um, This was actually with my partner and he was so calm and so just like nurturing as we went through this process of literally just kind of like shining the light, like, hey, you need to look at this, like, look at this. And a trigger response for me is disassociation because of the pain and trauma I've been through. It's easier for me to just say, oh, this experience happened. I didn't like it. I'm just going to pretend like it didn't happen. Oh, yes. So, preach. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to like put that on the rug and nope, it's done. Sealed. Um, I think it's also my Virgo energy. My inner planets are in Virgo. So if it's like, if it's not pristine, I don't want it. That's, that's part of my shadow. Um, and it was really difficult for me to look at that because I was like, wow, I can't believe I did that. That's so not aligned with who it is that I am or my morals and my beliefs and my values and what I stand for and the work that I do. And so first it triggered anger in me because I was like, oh, I don't want to look at this. Why is this coming up? And um, we were talking about outbreaks on our skin. I've been breaking out on my neck and my chin, releasing all of this energy that's no longer serving. Same. We were literally talking about that because like my whole neck, and first I thought it was the mask because we still were wearing it kind of every day. And I'm like, I did realize part of it could have been that, but at the same time, it's been in the area of the same throat chakra for a really long time where it never gets it or it never really doesn't, you know, it's on my period or something. 
the rest of the month usually I'm okay. And I've been getting them literally all over my face or especially that part, like you were saying, which is crazy how the body transforms it into that. It's like, hi, knock, knock. If you haven't noticed me already, can you notice me now? Yeah. Yeah. Are you ready to release? Like we're trying to let go. Like we're trying to get out. You just got to let me go. And the letting go part, that was, who I think the most difficult for me and my anger, because I didn't want to look at the shame and the guilt that I was still holding onto my solar plexus. And I feel like I've gone through an entirely new spiritual awakening, just like coming into more contact with my energy body and realizing why I've done certain things all the way back to my childhood. You know, I realized that, um, where am I, what am I trying to say? Ultimately it came down to me not trusting myself, um, because I was put in situations where I had to like, I had to grow up really, really fast. My parents weren't really emotionally present in my life. And so I was kind of left fending for myself. Um, being the older sister, I was like, I have to protect my younger sisters at all costs. And um, I just recently hired a personal assistant, yay, for yay. help. Um, but she had actually taken me through this. She was like, I have a download for you. And I think that the reason why you don't trust yourself and like why I lied ultimately and then bypassed was because when I was a child, I, I knew that... I needed to find answers and that I needed to grow up really fast. I needed to figure the world out because I didn't have that like safe net, safety net for my parents. But I was so young that I didn't understand the world. Hence, I now no longer trust myself because I don't have the answers yet and nobody else around me has the answers. And so from that's when I started to kind of like shut off. Um, I talked about this on TikTok recently. I was not very exuberant as a child. I was the complete opposite, very closed off, very, very shy and scared to hold space, scared to take up space. Um, and so hence the culmination of shame and guilt and fear in me. And um, yeah, so recently this, this all came up and I was having a really difficult time seeing myself through the eyes of love. I was just like stuck on what I did. I was like, I can't believe I did this. I can't believe I did this. And you know, the anger cycle repeats. And then when I finally was like, I need to look at this. I just need to look at it. I, like I said, before we started the podcast, it was like, I found this black hole of shame, shame in my solar plexus. And it was really easy to just spiral down in this, this vortex of shame and forget why I'm here, forget who I am, and really just detach completely from any sense of like loving myself. So yeah, I think when I reached out to you, this was like a week, a week and a half ago, I was in a really dark place. Um, I am not suicidal by any means on a day-to-day -day basis, but that day I was like, how do I get out of this? That seems like my only option. I wasn't actually going to do anything, but these were literal thoughts flowing through my mind. And mm -hmm. go ahead. First of all, no, I just want to point out that it's really important to talk about these topics, regardless if you're, if you believe or if you're, if, um, regardless if you're spiritual or not, regardless of the fact that, you know, you're here listening, you're like, well, I don't understand fully what they're trying to say, but I'm trying to see and like try and test out the waters with the spiritual side and like chakras and things like that. Mental health matters. And at the end of the day, having those thoughts, the fact that we're talking about them, because then I'll tell my side of the story as well, because I've also gone through stuff. So I really appreciate like this is the reason why we started this. Well, this is the reason why I started to always believe right? like we're creating the safe space because it's super important to see the dark side of it that we all go through no matter what. That we all go through. Yeah. And I mean, we talked about this at the beginning, how everything is like coming to the light right now. And I think it's, it's very important to be talking about this because like we can do all of the right things. We can be in a routine and do our yoga and meditation and consciously live and move about life, but still have moments where we fall back and we dip into these lower vibrational frequencies, or we think these thoughts that aren't aligned with the path that we're living. Um, something that kind of came to me, it was like a download, was it was just like what I had experienced was a trauma response. Something triggered me not feeling safe. I, I mean, I didn't feel safe within myself. I was like, can I even trust myself? And just like spiraled. Um, and went and fell right back into old patterns. So I've been finding it really powerful to just kind of like try to remain rational about 
the process that's happening and about the workings of the mind and the workings of the body and how energy is streamed through our physical body and based off of our mindset where our the frequency that our subconscious and conscious mind is functioning on determines how we project the energy out into the world like what our reality looks like so if there's still that programming that I'm not worthy. I can't trust myself. I'm going to unconsciously enact situations in my life that validate that belief about myself. Exactly. Exactly. And it's interesting also to hear out loud because even though, even though um, I lost the sentence, I was going to say that. Sorry. See, (laughs) we have talked about this. we're friends so we talked about this you know privately and whatnot that's why I know where you we are very caught up of course so even though we have that in common I also love how we're able to shine a light on um how we're all going through it as a collective as well so I'm trying to say like I think between everything that you've been sharing and that I'm going to share in a sec we've also been seeing those moments like through everybody sharing their story as well, whether it's a comment, wherever it's just another TikTok that we see randomly, you know, pop up on your free page. And you're like, oh, it's so interesting that maybe for you wasn't, you know, like the throat chakra in particular, but it was something else because it's that moment in time that we're really pushing through that bigger door, that higher climb and going through that pain. And, and, I guess is the point where I insert my story because it's really, it's actually really similar to yours in a lot of ways, shapes, and forms. It is a trauma response. It, it's the non self love and self worth I have. I know me breaking out, um, the throat chakra on my back, all these are stuck emotions that I have to release. And I know one of the biggest ones is learning how to forgive myself because much like you have done things in the past that I didn't like and that were completely out of character I feel like I've I've, in my case I've been moving on a lot from that but my biggest thing from what I've seen it's like why do I love myself enough like I see what I'm doing I'm proud of like of course I was believer my job my family my like all these things because I'm like okay I'm killing it I'm doing it I'm putting in the work and I know I'm putting in a lot, like a lot of the emotional work behind it and like you know the shadow work behind it I'm like why don't I wake up and say I'm like I love myself or like or have that self-worth and that's obviously it's a trauma response from things that happened to me as a child as a teenager in the past in general because I didn't feel safe and because I didn't feel protected within my own space and much like you <laughs> people would think it's like, oh, you're always extroverted. I'm like, no, I was a shy little kid. I was like, really, really, like, I was so afraid of taking up space. And to this day, every single day, more and more, literally today, we, we talked about it right before recording, because of course we're friends and we bumped it out first and we kept caught up first. And it's like, I'm afraid sometimes to keep talking to like, mm. am I doing the right thing to like have this episode out there? Like, I don't know. And it's not like, I'm talking bad or anything. I'm actually just telling my feelings and I'm saying what's on my mind because this is what I feel. And what I feel right now, I feel like crap. But, you know, that's literally what I feel. But I'm go, I'm working through it. And one of the biggest reasons is like, no, you need to put that extra work in, that shadow work in because the more you speak, hence the throat chakra again, like the clearer your, your, the clearer your voice is going to be and the higher your, tr- your vibe is going to be and your, your tribe and the more connected you're going to be with the people who are energetically aligned to you. So I still technically haven't walked through it just, although I'm going through it right now because I don't think I've, I still haven't seen myself on the other side. So I still feel very like going back to you, what you said, suicidal, much like you. I mean, if I had those moments back when I was a teenager and I was very close back when I was a teenager for a few times, in a few occasions. Um, and I have talked about it in conferences, I'm much better of therapy, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, like all sorts of things. But it's it's the reason why we did an episode like this and the reason why I'm pushing for these kind of topics more and more is because, hey, yeah, we talk spiritual all you want, we are helping you all you want, we're powerful, we're positive, but this is the real side of it too. And, you know, we're, I cannot state it enough that we're in this together, that like you also might have had suicide. Like when the day that you told me this, like, holy crap, like me too. Like we don't talk about this enough, how deep, dark down we go, literally. And not every single time. And it hasn't happened in a long time. And I know for you, it hasn't happened in a long time either. It's not like a current monthly thing, you know? And if it was, you would have reached out for more help because of course health comes first and mental health 
please, please reach out to someone in need, like someone, like someone to help you. <laughs> there you go. Um, but that aside, it's, it's, it gets intense and you think you're alone and, and you have all these negative thoughts. And I feel like once again, because I know I'm still in physical pain, I know that I'm still in emotional <laughs> stuckage pain, <laughs> trying to see like, what do you want from me? What do you need to get it out? Like what, how? Shake it all about. <laughs> yeah. like, shake it, shake it. It looks different for other people. What wasn't that the quote? Let me go back to the quote. At the, end. <laughs> the original quote. Yeah. So the original quote we were talking about this way back when, well, a couple of weeks ago by now, but still, um, we're all going through it. Your body transform it into something different. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yes, I love that. Like, oh, so much, and it just—it's so beautiful. And just to kind of like go into a little bit more detail about that. Um, yeah, so we talked about like the shift that's happening, higher vibrational energy um, streaming on the planet. There's this ascension process happening, but we all have had very unique experiences. We all have had very different experiences and we're all holding on to energy in different places in our body. So based off of where we're at in our journey, the energy that's coming through onto the planet is going to manifest differently in our body. Like we've been sharing it's the same energy, but our bodies are receiving this energy in a very unique way, meeting us exactly where we're at and showing us exactly what we need to let go of in order to take those next steps. Completely. So we talked a lot about the third chakra. For me, it's probably the root chakra because it is my lower back. It's the lumbar and it's like, oh, it's higher to go, oh, hernia. Oh, it could be this, it could be that, you know? And for me, it's like kind of on a jumbo because I'm very <laughs> holistic and either like, pills and I'd rather go the natural route like we think I think I'm pretty sure we talked about this in the first episode you were in like you know natural medicine and things like that so I'd rather take that route and like heal myself in that kind of way then um, I believe in signs and all that stuff and I'm taking the right steps of course I'm like bed rest and taking easy and like doing the right kind of exercise and activities of course and whatnot but more so than that I'm like all right so what is this like the throat I get the throat is probably me speaking my truth more and more and releasing probably more anger and like inner thoughts what is it in this part of my body which is being my right side what is it in that area that I'm holding on to um it kind of lines up also with like for example hyperthyroidism you know and for me that means my metabolism is slow that means I gain weight really fast and the past two years have been very very heavy and toxic and like intense um, through the pandemic, mainly because of the pandemic, but among other reasons. And um, a lot of that is there. Like I know a lot of that weight is there. So I'm, what I'm figuring out in that kind of sense, going through the whole, like releasing it in different ways. I'm like, why is it stuck here? How can I help it apart from rehab and apart from yoga and apart from, you know, how does that look like for me? What steps can I take that do I journal? Do I ask myself questions? Do I talk more to a therapist? Do like, what is it in that area that I can find myself releasing mm. that pain, that physical pain? Because the moment I release that physical pain, that also means I release my emotional pain. Mm-hmm. Because like you said, like it's where the way we look is the way we feel with ourselves. And this has been the heaviest I've been. This has been the most pain I've been. This has been the least, um, what's it called in English? Like, I'm not able to move. I'm a person that I love to move. I love to be active. I love to hike. I love to swim. I love to walk. I'm very active. And for the first time ever, it's like paralyzed because, you know, there's, there's certain days that the pain's so bad that I can't barely walk or barely move and it hurts and things like that. And I'm like, what is this teaching me? So that's just me right now. And I'm still figuring out as I go throughout this month, this month of May. And like, as I speak out loud, my thoughts, it's like, okay, this is, this is how we're gonna go through these doors Mm. by asking ourselves these questions like you did at that moment in time a few weeks ago. Mm. Right. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't stop and ask yourself these questions and well, you're going to be in pain forever. No, thank you. (laughs) <laughs> no thank you I am fine I want to walk everywhere again I want to go swimming and I want to go dancing so yes please 
Yes. Um, that actually reminded me of a, an excerpt I read on TikTok today from this book called The Secrets of Life by Stuart Wilde. And it's just like a culmination of little like short sayings that he's from, from all of his books. Um, and I picked it up today. I opened it up and I landed on the page trust. And I was like, ooh, this is interesting. Ooh. And I read like <laughs> two words. And I was like, I need to record this on TikTok and share this with everybody. But um, basically he was talking about how to take care of ourselves from a metaphysical standpoint, we have to, first of all, eliminate ourselves from the sphere of people. We have to, quote unquote, isolate momentarily, get out of all of the crazy vibrational streams that the earth, um, that we can tap into on the earth and um, come into the essence of trusting the universe. It's all a, it's all a mindset ultimately. And trust in and of itself is its own vibrational frequency. So he's talking about stepping into the frequency of, of trust, trusting in the world. The only reason that, well, there's many reasons, but a big reason why many of us don't trust ourselves or don't trust other people is because of what we're seeing, what we're hearing. So if we take ourselves out of the energetic field of this lower vibrational energy, we can come into a place of trusting the world again. And in order to trust the world, we have to first trust ourselves, which is very interesting. Everything we've shared um, about, yeah, the relationship that we have with ourselves. And then he went on to um, just like highlight the fact that we are eternal beings and wherever our, our focus, whatever our focus is on um, in regards to how we view ourselves specifically, that's what we're creating eternally. So it was actually funny. It's kind of like comedy at the end. But he said, if you're if you don't like who you are, you are in an eternal state of being pissed off with yourself. That's what we're creating eternally, the, the way that we're viewing ourselves. And it's like we didn't grow up in a society that taught us what self-love is or that, um, you know, encouraging us to love ourselves. So it's, it's not an easy journey. And it does feel like we're kind of going crazy because we're counteracting everything that we're seeing in the physical world. I love that you said that. It's not a sentence that I usually say that I feel like I'm going crazy because I know that everything's aligned and everything's working for my for me in my favor because I'm that kind of mentality. However, a lot on my for you page, whether it's Instagram, TikTok, wherever, I see like I see that it's a, I don't know, it's not only a popular sound I want to say, but it's also something people have been saying. I'm like, oh my god, I feel like I'm going crazy. Or like, do you like are you in that point in life that you don't know what's going on and like everything is like just tumbling? And I'm like, this is exactly what you were saying because it comes together as a collective once again obviously we're more or less around the same age regardless if you're 10 years older 10 years younger we're all living in the same world called earth we all grew up to some extent the same way of like you have to look this way you have to be this way you have especially as women which is a whole different size so I'm just trying to know that we have to be polite and be all dressed up and be pretty and all these sorts of things I mean, that's only talking physically imagine like just talking beyond that like mm. you were saying the fact that we don't know how to love ourselves because we're never taught and that's not something that we can hold we can hold uh previous generations against more or less because they didn't know any better we understand that we're learning but this is where we come in this is where we literally come in as a new earth and be like you know what this is what self-love lo self-love looks like this is how we're going to talk to ourselves so the fact that you think you're going crazy, you're not going crazy, babes, because I've, I've seen it so many times, like pop up and I'm like, oh, babe, you're not going crazy. Like, this is just, it's normal. <laughs> like, it's, it's, we're all going through it as a collective. Like, no, it's fine. Because exactly what you said, that we weren't taught. So we are teaching ourselves for the first time, regardless if we're 20 years old or you're 60 years old, we're teaching ourselves for the first time ever. This is like, you gotta love yourself and I love that you 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 spoke about the book and the world word is trust because much like we talked before recording and much I also talk on my TikTok and things like that it's like I am trusting the process I am trusting the universe I know my health is okay I understand that all the medical mumbo jumbo it's all taken care of I know abundance here I know I'm good in that kind of sense what I need trust in is in myself in a different whole area why literally because of what you were saying and it's like what you were saying I felt it today as well in a very intense way um, because I spiraled today again. And I'm like, I'm like, I don't love myself. I'm a bad person. Like, why don't I, why do I do this? And why do, am I speaking out? Like you spiral. 
And it's like, no idea, I'm not. Like, let's find ways for you to understand that this is, like, you can trust yourself, that you can love yourself, that you are worthy enough. And I think it's going to come to a time that maybe a lot of my content might turn into that probably now that I think about it out loud, of it's going to be that kind of repetitive like reminder and it's probably going to be mainly for myself but for literally the whole like universe kind of like it like you are worthy enough you are loved because stop being pissed off at yourself it's so easy I feel like our generation and whatever effed up you know childhood teenage who we all had because we all had it you cannot deny that like I mean there's people who had good ones and I understand and I respect that and I know people like that and they once again I totally respect that But as a whole community, I feel like there's more effed up ones and that's okay. But you have to learn how to like deal with them and deal through those emotions and recognize the fact that like it wasn't okay. So let's make it okay for yourself first. And here I am preaching to the choir. I understand. And I'm like, I'm I'm telling myself that because like I said, literally an hour ago before recording, I'm spiraling. I'm like, no, I need to wake up tomorrow. I'm not even wake up tomorrow. Fuck that. Sorry. See, there I go with swearing. I swear very little. Believe me, I don't like swearing. This is my thing. I'm very passionate I'm in the sense of like, no, after I finish recording this episode with you, I'm like, no, like, what do I do about self love? How do I attack this? I'm not saying it as a constant because I feel like sometimes you really got to trust the process and be like, let it go. <laughs> you can't always be, you know, doing the work in that kind of sense. But, um, going back to one last thing that you said with the book and, and the whole trust universe, it's like where you said it so well, you said it so nicely, the whole, we're eternal beings. Yes. And the end result of all that is how do you talk to yourself? I think that's a good place to start. <laughs> like catch yourself talking to yourself and catch yourself doing something good as well. Like catch yourself saying, like, you are worthy, you are loved. I am worthy, I'm loved. Yes. And trusting that. Yes, okay. yes. And I think that compassion is a really key aspect to this, compassion for self and for our abusers or the parents that weren't fully there, or fully present. Because like you said, they did the best that they could. I mean, I can't speak for abusers, people who, you know, are out there with yeah, them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there are people like that. Um, but when we're talking about our family and parents, most of them did the best that they could and they didn't know any better. And, you know, even, even abusers, like there's a part of their brain that isn't fully conscious to what, what they're doing or the impact that they're having, you know, like there's some aspect of them that feels vibrationally aligned with chaos and conflict. It may be a place of comfort for them. So they're unconsciously like creating harm to other people while they themselves are ultimately just seeking comfort, whatever the case may be, um, wherever we are, whoever we're dealing with, if we can find the ability to hold compassion for ourselves and any other party involved, we've now just like liberated ourselves from that lower vibrational gunk that we can get tapped into because we're not perfect. And we're on this journey of recovery. Exactly. Oh, you want to move two things. One, the comfort your comfort zone. We talked about this once again before we start recording and there's a whole different side of conversation of, of its own, I feel like, but it does lean into what you were saying about the abusers, like you're, when you get comfortable and you don't even have to be abuser to be that. Like you can easily like, for example, me and the pain I'm going through right now, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna get comfortable with it. I'm gonna be okay with this person talking to me this way. I'm gonna be okay with me not being able to walk and like maybe like tomorrow, I'm gonna start using a crutch every day until the day I die. That's comfort right there. So I think what you and me are doing as a collective people who are on this higher plane, who are pushing through these, who are going through the house of fire, literally who are going through these doors. It's like, no, it's so comfortable to be comfortable. Like even you and me have our weak moments because like you said, we're not perfect, obviously not. <laughs> like we're going to have those downfalls. We just have to learn how to like make sure we get out on the other side and have enough self-love and self-respect and self-worth. And obviously, you know, it doesn't start you don't go from zero to a hundred overnight by any means. You never do that, like ever, ever, ever with anything. It takes some time. So even if this is your day one, and even if today you were suicidal and you're like, holy crap, this is like, I'm listening to this episode right now. And this is like meant for me. And I'm like, I'm in a really dark place. Then reach out for help. Not only us, of course, but like, you know, people who are there for you in that kind of way, people who are able to like um, guide you through better moments because you are worth it. Because mm. 
we're able to get on the other side. We just have mm-hmm. to break out of that comfort zone. Mm-hmm. That's super important. And that's what that pain is. Yes. That's absolutely. what it's reminding me of us. <laughs> yes. And I think for me, speaking from personal experience again, um, I didn't want to let go of control. Like I didn't want to, like when I let go of my anger, then I was brought into my solar plexus and felt all the shame and guilt that I've been holding on to for yeah, decades. I was talking and- to my husband about this. Yeah. So weird. yeah, it's, it's not fun. It's, it's, that was like the last thing that my ego wanted me to do, but my higher self was like, Shayla, you just need to surrender when I was really downward spiraling. Um, like it was bad. My friends were concerned. My, my boyfriend was concerned. And then I was like, okay, stop, just stop for a second. And like, yeah, I, I had to start asking myself questions. Like, why don't I want to let go of control? Why am I holding on to this? Yeah. Why? You Why? literally, you took, sorry to interrupt you again, but so you took the words out of my mouth because that was literally what I was talking to about, again, before recording, but today out of all days, that was literally all the cards that I was, I was doing my cards this morning. And um, I don't remember the, what it says, it's behind me, but it's on the shelf behind me, so I can't reach it right now. But it's something about like, what are you hanging on to or something like that? And all the cards, my tarot cards, my angel cards, it doesn't matter what the cards were. Like, it was all about that. And I'm like, okay, I get it. I have to release really control. And I'm like, one, as the person that I am, as independent, as a boss, as an entrepreneur, as a leader, as all these sorts of things that you do see me online and, and not only online, but offline, I'm that kind of personality. I'm, I'm going to get it done because that's just who I am since a very young age. That's great and all, but then you got to have to like release and like say, that's out of my control. I'm going to, I need, I, I need to find a way to like, let go of that control. And it could be something as simple as the most pettiest thing I'm going to say, grocery shopping, because we're literally talking about that as well. Maybe you want to do a million things in one day, but then you're like, wait, this is too much for me. I need to let go of that control. Let someone else do the grocery shopping. I say that because my husband's currently doing that. Not because I wanted to go, to be honest about that, but because it's something that's been on my mind, like, oh, the list, oh, I have to do this, I have to do that, because subconscious is not what we do. So something as, as, daily mundane as, as a grocery shopping list to put it to an extent as something as deep as like that guilt that shame you need to like let go and like let go of that control because once you do and it's hard I think I feel like that's because when you see yourself in the darkest shape possible but when you do that you see yourself in the lightest way possible right after so you're like okay I have yes. to do that and you reminded me with the with the book quote and with your story the frequencies again. I live with a lot of people. I deal with a lot of people in my daily life through work in general. <laughs> you pick up on vibrations and plus we're highly sensitive people. I also live in a big city, which also doesn't help in the sense of we're always surrounded by people, which I love. I think one of my biggest things is that to bring balance and myself back to center is this connecting, is this associating and just like f- going back to your frequency much like you did in that moment a couple of weeks ago, much like your book also told us today in, your, in that quote. And much like, I feel like it's a reminder because since we weren't taught how to self love, and once again, they did the best they could and we understand, but we're breaking generational courses because we want to do better. We want to do better. We're doing better, we're doing, we're talking about this because we want to do better for ourselves and our future kids. Even if we don't have kids, it doesn't matter for our future generations. That's the point of the story because we deserve better things. And that's what self-love is in that kind of sense. Mm. Like reminding ourselves that it's okay to literally quote unquote disappear from the world for for a little bit and align and come back to center. I, I think people don't see that yet. I think people are like, oh, but I do my yoga meditation. I do this. I'm like, no, 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 no. Did you really sit down with yourself though? Because that's that's the point. You did two weeks ago. I'm doing this currently, literally, because I need to release whatever I have on me right now. Mm-hmm. But I'm sitting down with myself. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And on the note of like really needing to sit down with yourself, I, that was what I was running away from. Like I have my yoga practice, my meditation practice, and I do my journaling and da da da. And leading up to the eclipse, I started to feel like I was just going through the motions and I had gotten too used to like looking at my list 
okay, these are the things I need to do. And I'm going to literally do them all today because that's just who I am. And that's the work ethic I have. And I'm going to do it all myself and it's going to be fine. And I'm aligned and that's that. And just like my ego coming through and really being like, all right, you're doing the right things physically. Like you're going through the motions. So um, you're good. You're good. Yeah. You're good. But, but I no, wasn't. No, I wasn't fulfilled. Um, I, there was, yeah. Like I, I, I was running away from myself ultimately. Um, and not the self that we truly are, but the self that I was viewing myself as. So like the, the thwarted view of myself that also associates with the difficulties and just all of the negative things that people have said to me or all the negative things that I had done. Um, so yeah, like the, the act of surrender, it's the most difficult thing to do. However, it's the most powerful. And the mental imagery I keep getting is like, we're on, there's like this, um, what do you call it? Like the, the waves, the currents in the ocean that take you under, like tides, riptides. Rip, so yeah, they're, I don't know the riptides, but yeah. <laughs> okay, well, that's what I'm thinking of. That's what's coming to my mind. And it's like, we're trying to avoid being swept up by the current. Um, but if we surrender control and allow the current to take us, the mental imagery that came was like, that's really what brings us up is when we just allow for that flow of life to take us where, where we're meant to go. Um, I, I love that imagery, not like it's all the sea, but you reminded me, of course, Disney, not only Moana, which is just a power boss of a, of a character, but that moment also of Ariel, for some reason, talking about losing your voice in their chakra, but not really, that moment where there's a typical scene, I think it's one of, um, it could be the front cover of the movie, like when you see the DVD or whatever, of her coming out of the ocean with like all the, off all the like, the water behind her, I like that's the, I thought of right now. I'm like, there by Milano, of course, but also like a little mermaid to be like, here I am. I mean, here's this try, you know? Yeah. Yes. Everyone who knows the 90s Disney with Milano, like, yeah, I understand. I see that right there. Because it's true. And it's, it's, oh my God, it's surrendering, dude. I feel like we could do a whole episode on it, but um, that's probably what, especially what it is. It's, it's, yeah. it's surrendering, it's learning how to, it's, it's, it's tough. Mm -hmm. um please know that you know when, you know i know you're listening to this by now of course as you're here but um if, if it resonates not only come and follow and like and all that love but now if it resonates in the sense of you've been feeling down and about and just like really in a rough situation lately because of everything that you got to put in that work and that's really really tough and it's okay it needs to be tough. Mm -hmm. That's a thing. It's mm -hmm. like nothing, nothing. What's, uh, there was a sentence I wrote a while ago, probably my Instagram or TikTok, and I wish I could remember right now, but it was something about like, it talked about the trees, about the roots, in the sense of nothing stable comes out from something soft it comes from something hard it comes from something that's deeply rooted i remember the exact role i remind myself and i'll look it up and i'll put it under today's caption as well so it's there because it's really really important and essential as well in that kind of vibe if you look at a tree if you look at nature if you look at anything that we're building even if it's a building i know but something more natural like what we're saying like we're saying going through those rib tides and going down under really to come out and rise above it's like remember that you need to go deep down and like plant those roots really deep mm -hmm. and those roots are tough think about the trees those roots are really really tough to survive a whole lot of storms and a whole lot of rain if you really mm -hmm. think about trees for example mm -hmm. you know what I mean so kind of that's sort of <laughs> yeah <laughs> I agree with that completely. And yeah, the, the deeper we go, the, the stronger the roots. And it's ultimately a time where we're building our character. And we are, we're saying, okay, I, I'm going to actually choose to take hold of my life and consciously move my energy in a new direction. Yeah. Exactly that. My energy. The fact that you're here and not only you're here, you and me as individuals talking about this and recording an episode about it. And even if it only gets one listen, it's fine. The fact that you and me are already putting in that kind of work for ourselves, it's going to have a ripple effect in the universe, first of all. And second of all, it's because we do want to put in the work. I wouldn't be talking about this. I would have been quiet. 
I would have not done the always believer. I would have, I don't know, probably continued my boring nine to five job that drives me fucking crazy. You know what I mean? I am here because I want to be better for myself. Yes. In order to heal and in order to be better and make better decisions. And of course I'll fall in the future because that's just life and that's what happens. And that's, you know, you live and you learn and lessons are going, coming and throwing. I mean, well, right now as a collective, as that we're all going through something really intense and beautiful at the same time and feel like it goes a little bit crazy and down under, it's absolutely okay. Um, we're gonna, we're, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna repeat the original quote once more <laughs> so we can start wrapping it up. Um, like we said, now it all makes sense because we, we are all going through it. Your body transforms it into something different. And for me, you already know what I have. And from here, from the day that we recorded this episode to the day that comes out to the day that you might be listening to it, because who knows whenever that would be, I can truly trust myself to know I'll definitely be in a better place. Mm, yes. Because yes. we're putting in the work. And we should be proud of ourselves putting in the work. Yeah. And on the last note, putting in the work also looks like fun sometimes. That's something oh, that's yeah. hard, so it's been telling me. Have fun. Don't take life too seriously. You've already had, to, like, you're doing the work. Just trust the universe. Just relax. That's why, like, when I got my medical results and I did, there's a TikTok about this because I'm very open. And it's like, oh, just rest. Oh, okay. Let me, let me have fun then. Let me, I want to have fun. I want to let my inner kid out. And I, I let my inner kid out play a lot. I do a little, <laughs> I mentioned a lot. There's a lot of Disney. There's a lot of <laughs> online kind of posts and things like that. You can definitely see all the time. But, um, but play more. That's also part of the work. So it's a balance, please. Yeah. It's supposed to be fun. It's not all supposed to be hard and difficult. Those times, like that's where we're, we're building stamina and strength to then go out and um, be able to dance just a little yeah. bit longer and enjoy life a little enjoy bit deeper. Life. Yep. I mean, yeah. I'm happy we talked about the dark part because I don't think there's enough talk about the dark part. Like, totally. oh, it's all butterflies and rainbows and you meditate and that's it. And you're like, no, <laughs> no, no, <laughs> there's a lot of tears. Yeah, there is. <laughs> and tears and there's a lot of other stuff going on and physical pain, hands why. Yeah. The topic of today, physical pain. That's actually emotional pain. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's like we're, we're being prepared to live in this higher vibrational reality permanently. Yeah. And that's kind of like, that's, that's what I see is like, we will get to a point because like the healing, it, it continues and continues and continues. But what happens when we continue and continue and continue and then realize that we're light beings and like we're beings of love and we understand how we interpret energy and we understand what our triggers are, then what? I think that that's where it gets exciting is when we like, we become the master of the body and of the triggers and then are the ones saying, okay, I'm going to feel this or I'm going to send my energy this way. Exactly. So we're exactly. All and I think once again, it goes on to what one of the things we're saying is letting go of that control. Because the thing is, up to right now, whatever age you are, wherever life journey you are in, you you know you're in control. You know that you tomorrow you're waking up at eight in the morning. You know tomorrow you're doing X, Y, Z. You got to start like the moment you know that you're letting go of that control of saying, I'm going to take that leap of faith. That's where it all aligns. It's 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 hard. It, it's it's scary because we're used to comfort once again. But um, you're like, all right, let's let's take this leap of faith. Let me record an episode about this and let's see where this takes me. Let's open these doors. <laughs> you know, you know the yeah, yeah. <laughs> just go with the flow. All right. Um, well, that was definitely our episode for today. Um, very highly packed with beautiful, wonderful stories and adventures and just oh. So much words of wisdom. I, I, I love these episodes so much. I really do. Um, we do have a question for today, of course, and it's a very important one that's very aligned to today's episode, today's quote and topic, which is what is your body telling you? So let us know down below in the news comment, what is your body telling you? You know, is it to rest? Is it to dance? Is it to jump? Is it to, you know, this part of me needs to heal? Whatever it is, just let us know. Um, I always like to end up the episode with two questions well with three but the adjective one she already did that in the first episode so what we're going to do just two and the first one is what are you grateful for Shayla I am grateful for support I'm grateful for human connection and 
just all of the beauty and bounty that this life has to offer us in the natural world and through our brothers and sisters that we're walking this earth plane with. I'm grateful for love. Ultimately, I know that sounds really cliche, but that's kind of like the fabric and the basis of everything else. I'm grateful for the experience to share in love with other beautiful human beings on this beautiful planet. Well, oh, that was beautifully said. And I completely agree how I'm always thankful for love and feeling that love and that support in that community and that everything's made for you. Mm. Right path. Mm. Those reminders through the community and through what you see and yeah very thankful and of course for you where can we find you tell us a little bit more about you and then we can wrap it up <laughs> so my name is Shayla Coomer I am a professional metaphysical practitioner my business is Gamma Evolution LLC you can find me most active on social media via TikTok my username is at Lion Essence two E's on the end and I believe by the time this episode is released, my um, new website will be up and running. So the URL is www.gammaevolutionllc.com. Yay! Yay! It's a newfound change and newfound adventures and stuff that, you know, leaping into our bigger and higher selves and getting that abundance and the health and the wealth that we deserve. So we're putting in the work. Putting in the work. It's showing. <laughs> Not for anybody else, just for ourselves, first and foremost. Thank you so much for being here all month long. I can't wait to um, share and record the next episode with you, of course. But meanwhile, um, like I said, if you, if you haven't heard her full story, she did go to fly with us last month. Um, check that episode out. So if you're more of her story, check her out. All links are down below. And you know where exactly where to find me, of course. There's a year.com, link in bio. Uh, yeah, come follow more for more. And thank you so much for being there. And until next time. Bye, Team Flyer. <laughs>